Hey, it's Rob, and uh, I thought I would do a little review today of the Spire Studio. This little multi-track recorder, shaped like a overgrown hockey puck. Uh, it's made by a company called Isotope with a Z, and uh, it's pretty much the coolest thing I've bought in I don't even know how long. Anyway, let's go way back in time though to begin with, to this. I don't know if you're my age, old, you remember starting out in multi-track recording with one of these things. This is the one I had actually, the Tascam Porta 1. I've had many, many uh, Porta Studios since then, up to the digital Porta Studios, etc., etc. I probably had half a dozen or something over the years. But this was the first one, the cassette Porta Studio. Uh, for its time, it was pretty amazing. I mean, you had four different inputs here. They were just quarter inch, I believe. But uh, you had some EQ here, pan. Uh, you could rec record, I believe, two channels at once. The switch went up or down here. So you could record one or three and two or a four. Uh, had some very speed options there. Pitch control, it already ran, I believe, twice the speed of a normal cassette, um, three and three quarters. Obviously, it only recorded on one side. Uh, I think this was your monitoring section. You could mix down. It had actual VU meters. It was a pretty neat unit for its time in 1986, 35 years ago almost, but it just can't hold a candle to this thing. This is once again the Spire, and we'll just run through a real quick uh, tutorial recording on it, show you what to do with it. Um, it's actually live now. As you can see, it's showing me level and uh, it has this uh, built-in internal mic right here. And we'll get the pointer again. There we go, there's the built-in internal mic. Uh, I think it has a headphone uh, output in the front and one in the back. Uh, it can function as a standalone unit. There we are, you can start a new song right there, record, playback, etc., etc. It is a standalone eight track recorder, but you don't really have the functionality if you only use the device alone. By the way, the device, is very solid. Uh, it feels like it's made out of metal. Has a rechargeable internal battery. Uh, it's pretty cool for 300 bucks. And uh, really, like I said, it's one of those pieces that you just go, how can this thing even exist? And yet it does. And uh, not a lot of people know about it. Uh, another headphone jack in the back. It has the uh, capability to do phantom power, and it has two. Uh, Multi XLR uh, quarter inch inputs. So you can take either one and uh, runs off AC power supply too. That's about it for the thing for the physical uh, unit here. Uh, it doesn't have a speaker built in or anything, but this is touch sensitive. So if I want to set the volume control, this is actually changing my headphone level. Touch sensitive. It's crazy. It's this whole round plastic disc here and touch sensitive. And multicolors too, or maybe it's hard to tell on the phone, but you'll get blue, yellow, green, red. As you get new tracks that come along, uh, new colors come up on here. Again, I don't do too much with the unit as a standalone because just having the app is so cool and the app adds all this other functionality like effects and mastering, et cetera, et cetera. So we will go to the phone and luckily I got a couple of those. And uh, wait, I can't show you my code. Wait a minute, I can't do that. All right, I've almost got the code in here, I think. Try again. Okay, so we will go to the Spire app, and the Spire app will start out here. Um, sometimes it will ask to connect like that. I've been messing around with it, so it may be set to do that already. Uh, make sure your Spire Studio is on, then tab connect to Spire Studio. Sure, we'll do that. Uh, wants to join the Wi-Fi network, sure. Sometimes it'll do it automatically. Sometimes it'll make you log into its own Wi-Fi network and you are now connected. How about that? We will go to this little thing here, which is a plus sign, hard to see, and start our own new song. So this is our own new eight track song that we can record. Uh, the first thing you do when you're working with the Spire is you do a sound check. So you hit this and it automatically checks the level of this built in mic. So I'm going to talk as loud as I would normally talk, and it's going to set the level automatically for me. It'll show you that it's doing it on there. One second left, and it's done. Uh, the built-in mic normally comes up if nothing is plugged in. If you plug in, I believe, to number one, 
the mic will be shut off and your number one input will be live. I think if you plug into input two, you get the mic and your input two at the same time. Maybe you want to play a electric acoustic guitar or something earlier with a pickup plugged in and sing through this mic at the same time. I think you can do that. I don't do that very often, but I believe that's a general idea. Anyway, this is really weird using a phone and looking at another phone. Um, all right, so it's showing me my level here for my track one. Recording effects, it's gonna give me a bunch of effects here. Uh, it has amplifiers, which uh, are gonna sound pretty bad on my voice. But anyway, it has a bass amp, tube amp, etc. for guitar. There's a fuzz amp. Here's where we're going to uh, acoustic spaces. That's what we'll use for the voice. It also has pedals. Delay pedals, uh, a phaser. There you go. Some sort of revolving flanger type thing. Um, yeah, so it has a few different options. These are actually fairly useful. Not comprehensive, but uh, pretty good. For what it is. We'll do vintage dub echo. How about that? Hit the check mark and we will record on the phone here. And away we go with track one. Here is track one. Track one, a lot of fun. This is track one. That's it. It's automatically going to go to track two. We will choose another sound. How about Deep Space Vibes? Very cool for track two. We've already checked our level on here, so we're good to go. Check mark on that one. And we will listen back to track one, and then we will record track two. And this is track two. Track two, something new. We've got track number two. Two, two, two. All right, moving right along here. We'll just do a few of these. Track number three. Let's try something crazy like this uh, phaser. The phase pedal here. Purple phase. Phaser. The depth. Some reverb. Crazy stuff, man. I'll let you hear it in a little bit. All right. So we're going to listen to one. We're going to listen to two. And then we're going to record three. All right, and this is track number three. Track number three being recorded by me, track number three. All right, and finally, it's gonna go to number four. What can we do that we haven't heard yet? Uh, some sort of uh, echo, echo, echo type thing. All right, and we are into track number four. All right, so I didn't like that. I'm gonna go to the rewind button there, reset, and it erases the last thing I did. And finally, what we have in store is track number four. And that's it. So we have a multi-track recording here. And this is the cool part. Are you ready for this? The mix down section. Each track has its own little orb here, a little circle, and you can place it anywhere in the stereo field. How about number one here in the top? Volume is up and down. Stereo is right and left, of course. So we'll ping pong over here. How about three up here? And how about four back to the center again? This is our mix. We're gonna go here. We are going to have the option to enhance it. Uh, it's got a little slider, I believe, that tells you how much enhancement it can do. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Sometimes it does something, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, we are definitely going to enhance our recording. So this is mastering now. It improves the clarity, enhancing, boosting the loudness. This should go pretty quick because it's a small file, obviously. And there's our mix. 
I'm going to send my mix over here to the outside world and preparing the mixed file for export. And you can see it gives you all sorts of indicator lights and stuff on here as well. I should have shown this during the video too. It shows where the different tracks are, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, maybe I can show that later if I remember how this video is already getting incredibly long. But <laughs> uh, anyway, we are preparing our mixed file for export. And if you watch, it's going to go right to Robert's Mac. How about that? It's going to go airdrop over there and it is ready to be played if I can do this hit open hopefully it'll come one, up here one, one. here is yeah, track, track one, one track one, one a lot of fun, fun. fun. this is track one. track one and this is track two track two is something new we've got track number two 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 all right and this is track number three track number three being recorded by me track number three and finally, and finally. What we have in store, store is track, track, track number, number, number four, 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 four. Well, how about that? And uh, so that's it. That's the Spire. That's as fast as you can do a multi-track recording. Uh, I think if I hit done and maybe I X out of here, go back to record. All right, yeah, so this indicator, of course, is the level for the mic. And it shows you that there's track one, two, three and four. You can't really tell, but one is green, light blue, dark blue, and purple. So as you record more, it fills up this circle here to show you that the tracks exist. And again, here's your display on here. And I could just scroll through and just keep on recording till I get to eight tracks and fill the thing up. Anyway, once again, The Spire Studio by Isotope. Highly recommended. It's, you know, head and shoulders above what this was. And uh, this was great back in its day. But this is here, this is now. Interfaces with your phone. Works as its own stand alone recorder as well. And it is just darn cheap for what it does. Highly recommended. Thumbs up. Go get it.